morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning, Sam. Please do sit down. Lovely to see everybody here at our service of Holy Communion this morning. And I've even remembered to take my mask off. As we start a sentence of Scripture. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let's confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, forgives all those who truly repent. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And before our Bible readings, we have the college prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now have our Bible. Our, our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said firmly, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the 
God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of A Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to that which is good, and love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, but ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another and do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all you love. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord. No. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will, or what will they give to return for their life? For the Son of Man is, is to come with the angels with the glory of his Father. And then he will pay everyone for what he has what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming to his, coming to his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. Well, if you came in here last night, you'd have seen the place full of, um, of fog. We, uh, we, we fill the building with this fog, and it's an antiviral uh, protective fog that settles on stuff, and it, and it leaves an antiviral active protection, so that when you touch stuff, if you've got anything nasty on your hands, it'll kill it. So we're hoping to make sure that when you come in here, this is absolutely the safest place that you can be. So I hope that you feel very safe this morning. And uh, it's lovely to have you with us, and welcome. Now, I had uh, a really good time on holiday in Scotland uh, just a week before last. I was not able to do the usual fishing on the loch where I fish, because COVID meant, for one thing, that outboard motors were banned. Now, I don't know why you can't have an outboard motor, during the time of COVID, but these are the kinds of inconsistencies that we've got. Only, only two people in a boat as well on the, on the lock. So it, it wasn't such a bad thing because the lock itself had been transformed into something resembling Ibiza. Because it was very, very hot and people were all out swimming in the lock and making a complete mess everywhere. So, so we decided that we would do something very unusual and we would travel to another lock and we went to to Loch Ness, and, uh, and it was from Loch Ness that I was able to join the Wednesday morning uh, communion, uh, morning worship on Zoom uh, from the middle of the lock on, on, on an iPhone. It's amazing what you can do with technology now, so it was great to be with you. I think I saw some of you there, didn't I? I was hoping you were able to see Loch Ness during the, during the service. So it was, um, of course, the wonderful thing about Loch Ness is everyone's frightened, so there's no swimmers in there. <laughs> uh, they were all frightened that a lot less monster would come and gobble them up. And, uh, and it was thinking of, of, of monsters in the deep um, that, that triggered the sermon this morning. Because when I read the, the story of Moses, it's interesting. When you, if you read Exodus and Genesis in Hebrew, it's very, not that I read Hebrew, but I've been studying it with someone who does. Um, you notice the connection between Genesis and Exodus. For instance, Exodus starts with the word and. We take it out in English, but in the Hebrew it starts with the word and. And that's to show that it follows on, that there are links between the two. And when you link Genesis and Exodus together, it's remarkable what comes out of that. And one of the things that comes out of it is about sea monsters. About sea monsters. In Genesis 1 21 we read that on day five of creation god created the creatures of the sea in hebrew we're told that god created hatatanim hagdalim which sometimes we translate as whales w-h-a-l-e-s it means a sea monster a serpent-like creature 
which lives in the sea. That's what God created on day five. So how does that link into Exodus? Well, when Aaron and Moses confront Pharaoh about you know, wanting to take the Israelites and set them free, a little contest that takes place, and Moses and Aaron throw down their stick, and Pharaoh's people, they throw down their sticks, and they turn into Hatatanim Hagdalim, serpents, these big monsters, and the monster of Moses and Aaron devours the monsters of Pharaoh. Now the word which is used is very interesting. God creates these Hatananim Hagdalim, these sea monsters. The lesson we learn from that is that God actually did create Nessie. It also, it also shows, more importantly, that God is in control of the monsters. The things that frighten us and scur us, even terrible monsters, God is in control. Without the knowledge of God's authority and power, terrible things might frighten and overwhelm us. However, we need to be mindful that God is more powerful than even the most frightening monsters that we can imagine. It was only safe in that knowledge that I was happy to go fishing on Loch Ness. <laughs> now, there are lots of parables. I, I talked about one on, um, on a Wednesday morning worship where um, the Pharaoh says to Moses, because you've asked to set the Israelites free, I'm going to make life more difficult for them. Instead of giving them straw and make their bricks, I'm not going to give them straw. They've got to go out and find their own stuff for each day. It's Dabar Yom Bayom, the stuff for each day. And it's marvellous because when eventually the Israelites are led to freedom, they're hungry and God provides manna for them. And Moses says, now you can go and collect Dabar Yom Bayom, the stuff for each day. And it's the contrast between Pharaoh, who says, you've got to go and get the stuff for each day, and God who says, I will give you what you need for each day. It's a marvellous contrast. There are more. It goes on. When Moses gives, when Moses' mother gives birth to Moses, we're told that he was a fine child. He tough. He tough. We're also told that when God created the world in Genesis, God looked at the world and it was Ketoph. Good. Good. Uh, the, one of the lovely ones is, um, is when Mo Moses' mother, she's hidden the child for three months from Pharaoh and his soldiers, keeping the child alive. And after three months, she realises that she has to take a chance and she, she takes the baby Moses and she places him in a basket. You all know the story. Places him in a basket, covers it with tar and pitch, and sets it into, into the reeds in the Nile. And, uh, and it's a basket, but the Hebrew word is tebar. Tebar. The word tebar only occurs in one other place in the Hebrew Bible. Have a guess where it is. Go on, have a guess. Janet Iverson got it in the first service this morning. No. The Ark! Wonderful! <laughs> Go to the top of the class, John. Well done. Yes, the Ark! The Ark! God uses an Ark to spur Noah. And we're told that God then chooses an Ark to save Moses. And of course, uh, it's very interesting because we believe that the Ark was put into, with Moses, into the Red Sea. But in the Hebrew Bible, it never says Red Sea. We're told that uh, we're told that the the ark was put into the suf, the reeds, and when Moses leads the people to freedom from from Pharaoh, he leads them through the Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds. Now, this is all very interesting, playing with words, what have you. But what's the purpose behind it? Well, it's to show that throughout this historic period of the birth of the nation. God is in control of events. 
looking at what's going on, and it might seem that it's all haphazard and nothing seems to make sense, but God is keeping control of what's going on. It is not unpredictable. It's God who is making events happen, keeping his people safe. Now, I'm going to finish uh, this morning just by mentioning two, uh, two important people, women. Many women stand out in the stories that we've been reading through Exodus as we've gone over these, these, these weeks. Moses' mother had great courage when she uh, defied Pharaoh and she kept her child alive and set him off in the ark. Uh, Moses' sister, great courage, following the ark and making sure that Moses was safe. Pharaoh's daughter eventually took hold of Moses and made sure that he was nursed by his own mother, who the sister suggested. But before uh, coming up with the idea of throwing baby boys into the Nile to kill them, Pharaoh had, had another idea. We read about this last week. He said to the midwives, when the baby boys are born, kill them. Let the girls live, but kill the baby boys. And two women, two midwives, were told, defied Pharaoh. We're never told the name of Pharaoh. Pharaoh isn't just a word that sort of means king. We're never told his actual name. But we're told the name of these two midwives who showed great courage. And they were called Shifra and Pua. And they earned their place in history because of the courage that they displayed and defied the power of Pharaoh. Now in Matthew's Gospel today, Jesus goes to a place called Caesarea Philippi. It had been named Panaeus after the god Pan. And it was renamed after Caesar, the new god. And there were statues everywhere to celebrate the power of Caesar. It's in that place, with all that power displayed around, that Jesus says to his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter says that Jesus is the Christ, God's Messiah. In that, uh, in that uh, arena, where all that power and authority is, uh, is around, Peter recognises that the real authority lies not with Caesar or Panos or any of these other pretenders, but with Jesus. And the point for us this morning is that there are many challenges to God's power which lie around us, many frightening monsters things which would scare us. But they are only a sham. There are no pharaohs or Caesars or scary monsters who can challenge the power of our Lord. And it's against such powers that Jesus asks us the same question this morning. Who do you say that I am? Where do you put your trust? Is it in God that we trust? No matter the appearance of things which frighten and disturb us, which seek to claim our obedience, it is Jesus Christ who is Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to have our prayers, and our prayers have been prepared for us this morning uh, by Richard Ledger, in his own loving hand. <laughs> and so if I should uh, stutter over any of the words. It's just because I'm trying to decipher what he's written, so please be, be patient. But let, let us pray. And we begin our prayers this morning with the, the words of the offering prayer, as we say together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The bidding for our prayers this morning is, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. And if Father, you encountered Moses in the burning bush, and you changed him, and his life was never the same again. And so we pray that we would have that same awareness of you beside us in the ordinary days of our lives. 
you would draw us close to you and meet us in our joys and in our sorrows. Lord God, you delivered your servant Moses from those who sought to afflict your people. So protect, we pray, your people in this time of trial. We pray for all of those who work hard to look after others and keep safe people in our community. We thank you for them. We thank you for those who work in caring roles, for those who work to keep going essential services. And we give thanks for the great reduction of infection in our own community. And we pray for the ongoing safety of our own church family and of all of those who worship and meet here at St Mark's. Remember today your giving of authority to Peter in your church. And so we pray for our church leaders, we especially pray for Alan and Richard, our bishops, and for all of those in authority and guidance. We pray for those who teach, that your truth would be made known in our own generation. And help us by your spirit to live in the light of your teachings, that our lives would be governed by the laws of love of your kingdom. And we share in saying together the words of the offering prayer as we give our lives and all that we have to God in his service. And so we say, Yours, Lord, is the greatness the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We share in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Remember, dear Lord, your provision for us in life and in death. And remember and give thanks for those whose lives have been lived before us as an example to us. And we pray for those who mourn. And remember especially today, Reginald, George, William Wright, and Mark Clayton. And may the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, Rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, and he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. So send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near in faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, and his blood which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Draw near me. And so we have our prayer for after communion, and then we share and say together the post communion prayer. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say to you, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love this day and evermore. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.